Okie dokie. Well, we've gone from the grand to the tiny, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm presenting Clifton Hill Primary School, which is in Clifton Hill and it's on Wurundjeri Wurundjeri Country. And Clifton Hill Primary School Gold Street Campus is a new three-level vertical campus for years five and six students at Clifton Hill Primary School. And it came about after an extensive AMP2 process with the school, realising the need for 10 new teaching spaces and on a site with limited land capacity. So the school itself uh, is sitting on the western side of Gold Street and there's the original campus, there's the Auburn Factory campus and then the BSBA bought this site on the eastern side of Gold Street, immediately opposite the Darling Garden. So there's this expanding series of um, campuses for the school. Um, there was previously a 1980s housing development on the site with some beautiful trees that we tried to retain, but they were deemed to be at the end of their life and a risk of falling limbs onto kids. So that was very quickly a no-no by the SBA, so they had to go, unfortunately. Um, classic school campus started with an amazing 1860s heritage building and then it's just incrementally grown over time. A whole series of different buildings, um, you know, BER buildings, etc, etc. So quite organic in its growth and evolution without any coherent master plan thinking and a series of different internal spaces, many of them really not fit for purpose for the school. So they are fitting themselves to shapes that are not very helpful. So. Clearly there was a strong need for this facility. Um, and so what did we do? Well, we started on a site that had a very strong urban presence compared to a lot of the other buildings which were buried in the campus. Uh, it, it really presented a strong face for the, for the school. And I think because of that, it was important to us to allow the external street to run through the building as much as possible. And so really creating an active ground plane, bringing students through, circulating through the building and out to what was the limited outdoor space at the ground level because of the size of the site and the brief requirements. To fulfil the brief, we just very simply stacked a number of floor plates, so it very much became about vertical circulation and a vertical street with staircases both on the north and the southern end of the campus, and they were bound by a very generous corridor which fed into the classrooms but became a breakout space and informal play space on multiple levels. The classrooms themselves responded to multiple pedagogies, conventional teaching, breakout spaces, and then they could also be collapsed into larger teaching units where two, um, two classes were combined. Um, there was an opportunity to create meaningful outdoor space on the roof, so a campus where our footprint was quite large, we, we created a large um, play space on the roof with a pergola comprising solar panels as well. And this was all then wrapped in a brick skin, which really helped us you know, knit ourselves back into the context as well. So onto some site drawings, which are very fuzzy. Um, you can see our new, a new site diagonally across the existing main campus. The ground floor plane with the idea of the brickwork street running in and through and around the perimeter of the site, multi-purpose hall and admin buildings on this level. Our typical classrooms, we had five per four over two levels, so the classrooms, the associated breakout spaces, the common area in the, mid, in, in the middle, and some teach, uh, teachers' offices and meeting rooms, and then our, our, our quad a vibrant and exuberant um, rooftop play space where we collaborated with Glass Urban um, Landscape Architects for the rooftop. Um, um, some facade studies, which I'll talk to in, in, in greater detail, but it really was a building that was trying to, as I said, knit itself back into its context. And we can see a section drawing with our two primary stairs, the northern stair, the southern stair, the roof terrace, um, and the multiple stacked levels of the building. Tight, efficient, but highly sustainable. This project had some really strong objectives. We have been able to make this the first passive house certified primary school, school in the country, I think primary school, definitely. And, um, and so there was a really strong drive for the project. If you think about the volume of work done by the BSBA, if they can produce more energy efficient buildings, there's some really powerful impacts that they can generate um, through their built work. So a lot of analysis was done, but also the obvious things like shading windows, um, solar panels for energy. We also integrated a hybrid CLT concrete frame, so trying to generate a low carbon construction. But Passive House is all really about high performing thermal en envelope reducing energy use within the building. Um, a lot of modelling was done by Groom, which became Inhabit, which really demonstrated to the VSBA and the school that if we got this right, there would be 60% less energy use out of this building. So a huge reduction in ongoing energy costs, carbon costs, and reduction in the school bills. I think there was one projection that a $40,000 bill would reduce to about $8,000 a year for, uh, from energy use point of view. So a lot of modelling was done to substantiate this. 
Photos of the construction, the concrete core is the primary structure going up, um, and then CLT panels um, were slung in between these, the steel pergola on the roof and some of the brickwork occurring at the ground level. Um, Okie dokie, we seem to be missing a key slide. Oh no, we're not. Um, so there's a lot of technical achievements around the building and it's all about you know, highly insulated facades, but it's also about how the building does communicate both with the school and the suburb. And we really drew on the polychromatic and the decorative brickwork of the heritage building and also the surrounding terraces to help inform the architectural and appropriate architectural language for the school. But it's not just about context, it's also about play and whimsy. And we threaded in the narrative of The Very Hungry Caterpillar, a much loved children's book. Um, to become a motive for these green glazed bricks that are winding their way across the facade and taking bites out of the ground floor plane of the building. So it's an abstract reference, but it's a fun and a whimsical reference, which really provides moments of joy and delight and play for the kids. And the um, you know, projected bricks reference the old school building, but also the fur of the caterpillar as well. So how the building is a two minutes. Okay, how the building presents from the uh, from the gardens and also the wider context. And as we can see, it is such a strong and active corner, particularly on a street with a bike bike path and a lot of a lot of passerby activity. And so it's experienced from the out from the inside out. But it's also important to think about the, how how the school interacts with the suburb from the uh, inside out as well. Coming inside, we can see the street running through, and we took the brick paving all the way through, and the beginnings of the staircase leading us up through the campus. A multi-purpose space with beautiful windows to the garden, Darling Gardens, um, sitting opportunities, and then the vertical staircase running through the building. Very simple, robust, and honest materials, a color palette that was calm and soft and confident, and using the expressed language of the CLT panels to give us our cues. We're also expressing services. This is a teaching opportunity to the students as well. So the lobby area, yeah, breakout, um, sorry, the corridor area, breakout meeting rooms, and then looking back towards the southern uh, staircase as well. So active circulation on both sides and lots of breakout opportunities for the class and students. The classrooms themselves bring this very gentle, soft palette internally, great views to the gardens, combined classrooms, classrooms with one breakout and a small classroom as well. So very simple, very adaptable, but heavily used and much loved. Um, onto the roof terrace, the playful um, graphic of the, of the AstroTurf and the solar panels actually providing the shade for the pergola as well, exposing the environmental credentials of the building to the students. Tumbling down the staircase, coming back down to the ground floor plan with uh, more, more lockers, you know, calming in our calming stained green uh, plywood panels, and then coming back outside with our bites out of the facade. So on a limited site, how do you make the building an active, playful part of the facade? And there we are, sitting proudly in Gold Street as a humble little vertical campus, hopefully giving back to its wider context and students. Done.